I will now demonstrate regression analysis using R. To demonstrate regression we need a, a data set to work with and we will be using the prestige data set that is used in one of the assignments. This data set is a data of 102 occupations from the census of Canada in early 70s. The variables that we have are the, the units uh, that you're observing are occupations and the variables are education which is the average number of years that a person who has this occupation has, what is the average uh, income of this occupation, how many people in this occupation are women from 0 to 100, a prestige score using uh, some kind of scale that we don't really know about, uh, census code which is just an identifier that we don't care about, and then type which is a categorical variable of white collar, blue collar and professional workers. This data set is uh, available in the Companion to Applied Regression Analysis or CAR package in R and you can access the package uh, in R by using these and the help file that I'm showing here by using these R commands. So to uh, when we start analyzing a data set the first thing that we need to do is to understand what the data are about. So what are the scales of the variables? What are the means and standard deviations? Uh, how are the variables related? So calculating means and standard deviations is straightforward so I will not cover that but I'll show you one uh, very useful data exploration tool before I go to the actual regression analysis. My favorite uh, regression analysis tool for the exploratory analysis is the scatterplot matrix. So a scatterplot matrix is a collection of scatterplots. So we have for each pair of variables we have income here on the y-axis and we have education here on the x-axis and then we have observations here. So we can see graphically how education and income are related. We can see that uh, while they clearly have a, a, a positive relationship but the, the relationship is not exactly linear whereas there's a small increase initially in income on education increases then at some point it starts to increase more rapidly so it kind of like curves up a bit. We can see one outlier here so that's an observation that is uh, different from others could be a problem for our analysis or it could be an interesting case that we want to study more. I have another video about outliers. So what we do with this catapult matrix is that we, we look at the data, we look for patterns and we look for expected patterns and also unexpected patterns. So here we have an interesting pattern between income and women. So when the share of women is low, then we have both high income and low income professions. When share of women goes up, we only have high low income professions. So left is low, right is more, more up is more, down is less. So, so being a woman basically guarantees that you don't have access to these high paying professions but being a man doesn't guarantee you a high pay instead there are many occupations that are men dominated that don't pay that much. And this, uh, this upper diagonal here is the same plots they're just transposed so this plot is the exact same as that plot it's just a mirror image of the same plot. So that's useful to go through uh, when you analyze your own data set, I will not go through that in detail, but it's, it's a very useful tool to use when you actually start analyzing data yourself. Let's go to the actual regression model. And to do regression analysis, we need to have a research question. And our research question is, does the prestige of an occupation depend on education, income and share of women in the occupation? So ex expressed as a regression model, we say that the prestige of an occupation is a function of uh, beta zero which is some base level when education income and zero women is zero of course that doesn't exist but that's a base level in our regression analysis. Then we have beta one is the effect of education, beta two is the effect of income, beta three is the effect of women and then there is the error term u that represents some variation in the data that the model doesn't explain. Here is an uh, link to an ex explanation of the output and I will now explain the output. So I run the regression analysis myself and running the regression analysis is straightforward. I just specify the model here, the, the LM command, the tilde defines that prestige is approximately a weighted sum of education, income and women and we're using the prestige data and then we print out the summary of the regression model which I stored as rig1 
bar object. So we get some output. What's the output about? The regression analysis output from your software is always uh, some text and a lot of numbers and we need to understand what these numbers mean, what do the numbers tell us and which numbers are relevant for you and which ones are not because some of these numbers are not very meaningful unless you want to do for example model comparisons. So the output contains a couple of parts. First we have the summary of the model that we ran. So just a reminder that this is the regression analysis. For example, if we run five or ten different regressions and we print the results at the end, it's useful to know what is the regression model for these estimates. The second is the residual statistics. So this is the residual, the part that the model doesn't explain. The residual is uh, assumed to be normally distributed. So we can, uh, we can check that the mean should be, uh, the median should be at the mean and residual has a mean of zero because that's how it's defined. And then the quartiles, first and second, third quartiles should be about equally far apart from the media, from the mean and also the minimums and maximums should be about equally far from the mean. And it's, it's roughly the same. So the difference between our is, is two units and the maximum is 17 units, minimum is 19 units. So it's, it's about 10% difference. So not a big deal. Then we have the actual regression estimate. So these are the main results. These tell us what are the individual effects. I will be looking at explaining this part in more detail on the next slide, but that's, uh, that's the, the model estimates or the results. Then we have some model indices. Most importantly, we have the R square. We have some other things that tell us something about the goodness of this overall model. And some of these can also be used for comparing with some models that I will address in another video. So how do we interpret this? Let's look at the regression coefficients first. So we have a couple of uh, things here. We have the regression coefficient here and then we have a standard error which is estimated in somehow. Then we have t-value which is simply that the test statistic for testing the null hypothesis and the t-value is defined as estimate divided by standard error and you can verify that is um, 6.79 divided by 3.23 is actually minus 2.098 by using a hand calculator if you wish. Then we have the p-value. So the p-value here is uh, calculated based on some assumptions. The assumptions are not important at this point. They are important but I'll cover them later. The null hypothesis for the p-value is that this regression coefficient is zero. So what's the likelihood or what's the probability of obtaining an estimate of minus 6.8 if there is no effect in the population? The probability is 0.03 which is less than 0.05. We conclude that this is statistically significant at p is less than 0.05. 5, which is the, uh, the conventional minimum level that, that we want to have. This one star here indicates that uh, it's below the 0 0.05 threshold. So this is a, this is a legend for the p-values. Three stars means that it is below uh, 0 0.001. So these were the regression coefficients. Then we have some other things also here. But importantly, uh, we have this very small regression coefficient. Why is the estimate for income so small? Does it mean that the income doesn't really matter when we consider the prestigiousness of occupations? The reason why, why this coefficient or what does this coefficient mean? We have to consider the scales of the variables. So income was expressed as dollars. So one dollar increase in income increases your prestigiousness by 0.0013 units. So incomes are in thousands of dollars. So one dollar increase doesn't really make a difference. So maybe it would make more sense to, uh, to rescale the income so that instead of being expressed as individual dollars, we would express it as thousands of dollars. So if we multiply this by 1000 then we get the what's the effect of increasing your income by, by a thousand 
units or thousand Canadian dollars and with then it's it's more more uh, meaningful. We can also see that uh, that the effect is small in absolute magnitude ignoring the scale doesn't mean that it's non-significant because uh, because of the scaling issue this is actually very significant and it's actually a pretty large effect when you think about the scale of the variable from about a few thousand Canadian dollars to about 25,000. The next, uh, still, so the obvious thing to do here would be to recode uh, the income to thousands so we get uh, estimates that are more comparable and they're easier to interpret as well. We will next be looking at the model quality indices down here. So the model quality indices tell us something about the overall model fit. The most important part is the R-square statistic here and R-square tells uh, how much the model explains. So uh, these three variables together, income, share of women and education, explain about 80% of the variation of the prestige. So we can say that prestige of an occupation is mostly determined by amount of women, income and education. Of course, which one of those is the most important determinant, we would have, we would have to look at the actual individual regression coefficients. But all together, they explain about 80% of the data. Then we have uh, adjusted R square, which is 0 0.79, and that is uh, only slightly smaller than uh, the R square because we had only three explanatory variables and we had uh, more than 100 observations. So we had more than 30 observations for each explanatory variable. So the adjustment by the R square, adjusted R square, is pretty small because the bias can be expected to be small as well with that good ratio of variables to observations. So that's the adjusted R-square. Adjusted R-square is, is uh, useful for comparing models that are non-nested. What that means I'll cover later, uh, but it's also uh, useful for interpretation. So whenever you uh, are unsure whether you should be looking at the R-square, adjusted R-square, it's always a better idea to interpret the model using the adjusted R-square. If your sample size is large, it doesn't make a difference. These are about the same, so there's no meaningful difference between the two. If your sample size is small, then uh, adjusted R-square typically is a, a more relevant metric for judging how well your model explains the data. Then we have uh, some other statistics. So we have residual uh, standard error. So this is the standard deviation of the residuals and it estimates what is the standard error. It's, it's an estimate of the standard deviation of the error term. And it's not typically interpreted because it depends on the scale, but uh, we can do some calculations. For example, R square is calculated using this, uh, this number. Then we have uh, 98 degrees of freedom. That tells us uh, how complex the model is related to our data and it tells that we could add 98 more things to the model and still be able to estimate it. The degrees of freedom is not interpreted directly but it's used for model comparison and it's used for calculating some statistics. For example, the F statistic was shown here depends or, or its distribution depends on, on the degrees of freedom. So the F statistic is here, uh, it's useful for model comparisons. It's it can be calculated based on the R-square, for example. It's not interpreted directly, but it has a distribution that we can use for testing a null hypothesis that the R-square is exactly zero. So the T-statistic provides a test statistic for a regression coefficient being zero, and we compare that against the, uh, the T-distribution. F-statistic is a test statistic for the R-square being zero, and we compare it against uh, the correct F distribution. And here is the p value for that comparison. So, getting this kind of results if all the independent variables were completely unrelated with the dependent variable linearly would be, would be very unlikely. So, we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that these variables do explain the dependent variable also in the population. So, we get all kinds of uh, things from the model. The most important part to interpret in these indices is the, the R-square or the adjusted R-square. If you don't know which one to use, use the adjusted one. The other ones are used for model comparisons, calculating other things 
and those will be relevant when you do do more comparisons that I'll explain in another video.